Saxon Algebra 2, Lesson 109. We're going to talk today a little bit more about fractional exponents, and I'll remind you of those and how they work. Um, but first, look, we're beginning week 29. Yay! Okay, pig houses are a fact of life in high school algebra. We have things like this. We see them all the time, right? We call them radical signs. I mean, I call them pig houses, but they're supposed to be called radical signs. Um, and they sometimes have a number up here, sometimes don't. If they don't have a number, we know it's an invisible two, right? And we can rewrite this whole idea with a fractional exponent. Because this is a square root, we write an exponent of one half. And this two is there because of the invisible two that's there. So if we have a cube root, it's a little bit easier. We take the number on the outside and we put that in the denominator of the fraction. All right. So that's the pattern. What's nice about fractional exponents is that it's much easier to use radicals in more complicated calculations if we write this instead of this. The pig houses are a little clunky, but when we convert this same idea into a different notation or a different way of writing it, then we can do more interesting calculations. So we're gonna talk about that. Let's just review the basics in the first example. There are three examples in this lesson. 109.1 is what we have done in the past. 2x to the 1 half, y to the 1 fourth, z, remember my z's have slashies. And then we're raising this whole mega beast to the third power. Okay, so we're gonna use the power rule. And the power rule is that when you have a base with an exponent and you're raising it to a higher one, you multiply the exponents. And that's what makes these fractional exponents so easy is that we can easily raise them to a higher power by multiplying. If they were written like this, it would be insanity. Well, I mean, we can do it. It'd just be very messy. This is a much sleeker, neater, more elegant way to write it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this three and we're going to apply it to every single one of these bases, right? Notice that we're not adding or subtracting within the bases. They're all being multiplied together. I'm going to put a one on this one and this one so that I have something to multiply by. You don't have to, but it helps in the beginning just so that you're clear on what you're doing. Now we're going to rewrite each of the bases with their new exponent. 3 times 1 is 3. x. 1 half times 3, that's 3 over 2. Remember when we multiply fractions, we go straight across the top, straight across the bottom. y will be 3 over 4. And z will be to the third power. And we're almost done. The only thing that we're going to do is we're going to simplify this because we can calculate 2 to the third power, right? That's 8. And then we'll have x to the 3 halves, y to the 3 fourths, z to the third. These fractional exponents, you have to be so careful to make them not look like regular fractions. Mine are even getting dangerously big. So be very careful in how you write this kind of problem. Okay, this is correct. This is what we have done in the past. What John's going to do, and I'm going to just bust out a fresh piece of paper for this. What John's going to do now is he's going to throw us a curveball. I mean, why wouldn't he, right? X to the one half plus Y to the one half squared. Now, at first glance, we look at this and go, okay, power rule, we're going to multiply this times this and this times this. But here's the trouble. There's a plus sign. 
in between these terms. That means they're two different terms. That means this is a binomial. That one means when we square it. We can't just do the individual terms as we do when they're just being multiplied. We have to multiply or square the binomial, okay? So that plus sign is the troublemaker. So what we have to do is we have to write x to the one half plus y to the one half, and then we have to square it like that. We have to do the dance. Dang it. Okay, fine. As we're doing this though, what we need to use is not the power rule, but the product rule. And remember the way that works is that if you're multiplying matching bases with exponents, you add the exponents. So as we multiply this x times x with the one half exponents, we're gonna be adding those. So here we go. This, we add the exponents, one half plus one half is one. I'm gonna put the one there just so I'm clear. Now when I multiply this way, I don't have matching bases. So this, I can't change. It just stays x to the one half, y to the one half. It's a product, because we're multiplying those, but I can't squish them together. Okay, you're done, this girl's turn. Another one of these mishmashies. And when I multiply this, I add the exponents, and I get y to the one. Our last step, is to add them, so I'm gonna have x, I'm not gonna put the one on it, I'm gonna have x plus, now, we have two of these things, don't we? So we can add them together, we'll have two x to the one half y to the one half plus y, and that's our final answer. It's not all that hard, we do have to remember our product rule, that's important, but it's just, as one of my daughters would say, it's just annoying because doing the dance is always a teeny bit annoying. So that's why we have to really focus on those cute kids in their dancing lessons on Saturday morning and they're kind of awkward and shy to be with each other. Um, but that's what we have to do to multiply this out because of this dreaded plus sign. That's the troublemaker. Okay, let's do one more and then we are done with lesson 109. Expand is what John says. And as soon as we write this down, you know what we're in for. That is what causes us the problem. If these were being multiplied, no, we could do it like the first problem and just apply the exponent to each one of the bases. But it's this plus sign that drives us crazy and we're gonna square all of these. Okay, so what I'm gonna do this time is what I would recommend you do in homework. You don't have to write the whole thing over. This will be the first one that we multiply, and then we'll just write the second one below it, and we'll kinda of ignore that because here is where we're doing the squaring. Remember, we add the exponents if the bases match. This is x to the first power. Now we have a mishmash y to the minus one-half. These exponents can't talk to each other because they're on different bases, so all right, fine. Here we have it again. And then we do the y's. Plus y to the minus one. Oh, huh, okay. Add. I'm gonna drop that one, I don't need it, x plus, and sometimes students get confused about these. We can, this is a weird thing and this is a weird thing, so when we add them together, we have two weird things. Because we're adding, we can't combine those exponents. The power rule only works when you're multiplying. And this, 
we're just gonna write as y to the minus one. We know that this also means one over y, right? Because a negative exponent is a trapeze, right? That you fly. But this creates a messiness, and this is a nice, clean presentation. So when we're working in these more sophisticated problems, uh, we're gonna leave that as is. All right, let me just double check my answer. Again, if you ever catch me making a mistake in my lesson, please message me and tell me so that I can write a correction. I'll put a correction in the description to the video. So when you're starting a video, you can just glance at that description. Um, although it usually only works for people who are following me with a little bit of a time lag because somebody has to watch this and catch the mistake. The very first day I post it, you're probably not gonna know if there's a mistake in there. Okay, enough about mistakes. They happen to everyone. But I hope I didn't make any in this one. All right, guess what? We're done. That's correct. Lesson 109 is history. Next year, we will be working more with fractional exponents and less with pig houses. So, I mean, there's something to look forward to. Although I always miss a pig house, don't you? Okay, lesson 109 is done. Thank you, goodbye.